We get our music. Good morning. Good morning. Oh no, it's not louder than normal. My brain just didn't process it. Okay. Anyway, good morning. So today we're gonna be playing Dial Town. We're almost certainly going to be finishing it. Um, I don't know how much we have left in the game. And again, if we go, if it's shorter than like, I'm comfortable ending early, which. I'm really not comfortable ending or any earlier than, like... <sighs> like, if I had to end a stream early, it would bare minimum have to be, like, an hour and a half. Um, but, regardless... Um, we'll, we'll putz around until then if, it, if we had too early. But, um... That's what we're doing today. And I actually, so I don't know if I've ever really talked about this on stream. Um, I'm a, I've been a big Animal Crossing person since New Leaf, right? Um, and specifically, uh, part of that is everybody has a favorite villager. Uh, my favorite villager is Amelia. Uh, to the point that for, I think it was my birthday one year, my spouse bought me, uh, back like in 2020, bought me her amiibo card so i could get her at animal crossing new horizons and they literally said because they knew i was looking for her right like i was constantly keeping a slot open looking for her um or not open but like you know um and they said they felt like they were racing against the clock because they wanted the card to get here before i got her in my island <laughs> they were literally like every time i was like basically so sometimes if i'm feeling particularly paranoid i'll hand them my switch and have them push a button or have them blow on the screen to give me quote unquote good luck just because you know the human brain is weird and it's superstitions um and they said every time i did that they were like please don't please don't please don't <laughs> i thought it was really funny um but um I heard, I found out, because I used to play Pocket Camp pretty heavily that I fell off the wagon. I found out that in August of this year, they added Amelia. So I fully redid it because, like, I basically wanted to go back from scratch because I completely didn't remember how the game worked. But I found out after I started getting into it, she's, not only is she through Gulliver, but she's a treasure map through Gulliver. And I was like, why? <laughs> why? I'm still going to do it, but... It'll just be, oh, what, wrong one. There we go. Anyway, oh, let me get that out of here. All right, lovely. Back into it. I don't remember exactly what was going on, but we were in the middle of transitioning. All right, what's our game plan? I say we walk in and grab the eggs. That's the plan. Well, if we don't grab the eggs, how are we supposed to get them out of here? Hang on, I gotta pull up my sleeves. I mean, we're hardly accounting for facing any for us facing any resistance, are we? What about security? Well, the baboon enclosure's got a padlock now. We're safe. Uh-huh. I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, god numbers. Uh, I think that's... What's after May? June? June. Yeah, that's June. June 5th, 2006. Never forget he. Logan, what the fuck are you talking about? <gasps> ah, what's this I see? Two rapscallions here to pilfer my mayorally aside bounty, no doubt. Oh god, what in tarnation is he saying? Why does he have a mustache on a phone head? Norm, relax. This is normal. This was all established ages ago. Was it? Because I never talked to Theodore. Not for me, it wasn't. Have a drink. Why does he have a... Norm, Norm, shh. It's okay, I'll handle this. Shh. There we go. Quiet time. Now allow me. He's gonna shoot you. <laughs> Ahem. Theodore, you are a bastard man. I command thee to give my child her back this instant. Relinquish your shelled spot legs? I think not. Fuck, that was all I had. Alright, now looky here, partner. 
Egad, so the mayor wasn't just exhaling uh, copious amounts of hot air as I'd previously assumed. Annoy me. In the flesh. Who in tarnation are you calling a... No, now. By the way, Theoror's theme is my favorite in the whole game. The normie doth protest too much, methinks. What the fuck is a doff? Call me that again and I'll make you eat that mustache of your zebra boy. Perhaps I was foolish to expect the frontier bumpkin, a brute, to be familiar with the most gifted playwright, Willian Ringsphere. Willian... Willian Ringsphere... <laughs> For crying out loud, Theoror, his name was William Shakespeare, and his plays were agonizing to sit through. Depends on the play, but yeah. You're gonna have to side with Norm on this one, too, Theo. Yeah, it totally depends on the play. <laughs> I actually really like Much, Abo Much Ado About Nothing. Personally, in my opinion, I can't fucking read. So, yeah, don't quote asinine old literature to me, partner. I was there when, granted, a small amount of it was written. My, you aren't just a marvel of biology, but also of history. What do we, as a species, what I could learn from you? Ah, centering yourself, the fatal flaw of, uh, scholars. Norm, I have a plan. I'll try words first, gun second. Fair enough, we'll return to my idea later then. Look, I'm going to talk straight here. As that happens to be the only way I speak. No, don't. You speak in loops and lines all the time. You're a monster, partner. That was straightforward. Taking away the autonomy of senti sentient beings. Good folk like my pal Logan here. No, <laughs> It ain't right. It ain't American. <laughs> I gotta take a screenshot. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, whoops, I said that to the wrong person. Oh, well. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. That scared me so bad. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, that's your way of seeing things, I suppose. Say, is that a NASA suit you happen to be donning, Ed? Donning superbly, I must say. It's clearly from Party City, but okay. Tell me, cowboy. Was it quite so American for NASA to discreetly hire NASA scientists en masse following the, the Second World War? <laughs> also, we could uh, send a metallic phallic vanity project in an orb-shaped mass of cheese to outer space. <laughs> the shade, I love it. The you... The, that doesn't excuse. It wasn't about vanity, friend. It was about our country's pride. We were also racing the Stalin men to the moon. We we were showing that freedom could reach the deepest depths of this weary universe, even outer space itself, if need be. Uh huh. Does pretending that our holders care about freedom and. Ignoring atrocities committed by this very nation help you sleep at night, Normie. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're one to talk about dirty con uh, consciences, Whiskers. Look, if you want to slap iron bars around a sleepy half sentient taper, then be my guest partner. That's your right as an American citizen. But, locking up folks like my pal Logan here just because they don't look the same as you. That makes me go from seeing red, white, and blue to just red. <laughs> the eggs, Mustachio. Hand them over before I shoot these whiskers right off your face. Ha! You called that piece to a fire, up. <gasps> now this, this is a gun you could say bully to. This is my second favorite theme, by the way. Fuck, he's got a big gun. That is one big gun, gun norm. It's a lever action. Looks to be at 1873. Big, 
Big gun. Yes, Logan. Big gun. Well then, ma chère. It would appear that I am the only party here with the adequate firepower to, needed to make demands. So, to resolve this conflict, I'll extend an olive branch and offer a most equitable bargain. If you wish to remain with your younglings, Logan, why, I think I could arrange that. Arrange what now? A luxury enclosure, one with ample room for you and your younglings to romp, roam, prance, and frolic around in. I would give most anything to study your parental instincts up close. Uh... Uh... This isn't a root diverging choice, so I'm gonna just say this. Uh, luxury cell, you say? Seriously, Logan. You'd bargain your freedom off to a man like this. Freeman, your kids. Best to negotiate from a position of power, though, right? I think you'll find that with a rifle pointed at you, the power is very much in my hands. Shh, I'm retorting, Theoror. Righto. Actually, Theo, I wanted to ask you. Why did the mayor give my eggs to you? It's not like her to give anyone something for nothing. A most astute observation, Grim One. You see, the mayor inducted me into the mingling, her league of concerned citizens, to... You mean her elitist secret society? No, no, you have it all wrong, friend. You see, the mingling is actually a... Yeah, no. Spare us the spiel, half pot. The half pot ratted y'all out. That wraps, scallion. Whatever the case, I made myself quite useful to the mayor, you see. The eggs were the payment I received for doing a little favor for her. A decisive... Dis Decisively removing a different rogue element from Dial Town. Rogue element? Why, yes! The return of my escaped mystery exhibit, of course. You, you don't mean. Who else? Why, the elusive Sasquatch, of course. Back in captivity where he belongs. You feed, release him at once. Firstly, Bigfoot does not exist. He does, he does. I met him, Dorm. I met him, I romanced him. <laughs> and I happen to own him. And you're a right bastard for it. Surprised that wasn't red. And secondly, why did you get more upset learning that this fellow supposedly captured Bigfoot compared to, say, your children? Well, me and Bigfoot go b way back, you see. They're your kids, Logan. All right. I've met Bigfoot. Those little fu fuckers haven't even hatched yet. Unbelievable. All is fair in Love and Zoo, Norman. Lord give him strength. What kind of zoo even has a supposed Sasquatch alongside you, of all things? Isn't this sort of place only meant for animals? Ah! See what it is that you're con I see what it is that you're covertly getting at. If he wants to get out of this, he could technically say that technically humans are animals. Monami, please don't assume I wish to cast you out just because you are not in <clears throat> the family way. A chance to study a normie up close, why? I find myself shuddering with anticipation as I consider the very notion of getting to do so. Uh-huh. Like there's a goddamn chance I'd willingly hand over our freedom to the likes of you. I got my piece locked and loaded, partner, and I'll kill more flies than any other poor bastard I ever know. If you can find a faster shot than me anywhere in the country, I'll eat my hat. But wait, your hat has a U.S. flag on it. What did you be? What did devouring the flag be treasonous? Okay, so this is a very particular part of the flag code that is a little tenuous. So the bigger issue here. 
would be, in terms of, like, what's considered worse in flag code, is the fact that he's wearing the flag as an item of clothing. However, comma, there is debate on what counts as wearing it as clothing. So, something that would 100% violate flag code, and yes, people who uh, align with punk ideology tend to know a lot about flag code, but something that would 100% violate it is if, say, someone was wearing the American flag as a cape, that is violating flag code. Although it's like, you know, jaywalking, people aren't gonna, like, actually charge you for it. They're just gonna forget that it exists when they're bringing up flag code when people, you know, are correctly protesting using the American flag, but they're gonna be like, this is a, this is a good flag code. It's like, no, it's not, but you wearing if the flag is a cape, that is. <laughs> um... But because it's a hat, it's in a little bit of a gray area of whether or not it technically would be considered a flag, and thus both wearing it and then also in this case eating it would not apply to flag code, but it's kind of in a weird gray area of it. Anyway, wouldn't devouring the flag be treasonous? Hang on, let me hide it. Quiet, you. I must say, I advise against that, my bagged friend. I think you'd find my reflexes to be quite impeccable. Uh-huh. Why? I periodically shoot this rifle whilst I slumber. He's telling the truth, unfortunately. Also, like... That's not necessarily his reflexes, that's just him being stupid and holding the gun while he's asleep. <laughs> he's shot, like, 14 tapers through the wall. That I have, yes! Why? This whole place is a, uh, it's a goddamn madhouse. Shoot tapers through the wall like fish in a barrel. You're no hunter, and certainly no man of sides. Now, now, that's a verify, that's verifiably untrue. I'm wearing an astronaut suit partner from Party City. I reckon I understand signs, thank you very much. Right, but you're also in a cowboy hat with an American flag on it. The hat were a choice for men who despise fancy schmancy science and shoot at healthcare. Please stop helping. Look, you don't even need to be a scientist to see that this place is nothing more than a graveyard of genuine understanding. Do you honestly think you can judge a creature's natural behavior from an observation point outside of a concrete cell? None of this is scientific in the slightest, and frankly, well, remember what I was talking about with mantises earlier? <laughs> uh, you're an ingrate, partner. Plain and simple. Why, well, I never. I've done my share of field work, I'll have you know, have you? Why, I insist on wrangling every creature that I have on display myself. There isn't one wretched beast confined within my walls that I haven't personally socked right in the jaw. Even the bastard cr bastards in the crocodile enclosure? Indeed, and untranquilized too. What in Tarzanation? What in Tarantula Nation? You're not just an ingrate, you're out of your goddamn mind. Wait, Theo, how are you still uh, so limb y after wrestling crocs? Shouldn't you be missing at least a few of those? Maybe fingers. Bon cher. Have you ever heard of a hat transplant? Yes. Right, settled. Thanks for nothing. They're very, very difficult to do. That's why people just go with prosthetics. Your zoo serves no purpose. It only stands to give men like you an excuse to strip freedom from anything you find lesser than yourself. But, what of the children? Little Billy will strangle your lemurs if given free reign of the place. No, no, I was referring to the non-lost causes. As you know, Dial Town is a thoroughly uninteresting place, is it? Is it really? This zoo, while it granted may not be perfect, is a slice of that which is exotic here in our dull backwater town. A way to bring adventure to Dial Town's susceptible youth. Uh-huh, and how has attendance been lately? Even with re-entry, as of late, I've struggled to attract seemingly any guests at all. 
But the people will come. Theo, my dude, this place is depressing. By capturing these animals and sealing them away... Can't you see? You're hoarding all the adventure for yourself. If you had to go out and wrangle these animals yourself... To seek your own adventure, shouldn't the rest of Dial Town? Oh. Surprisingly well said, Logan. You'll find I do that a lot. Yo! I can't believe it. Why, you are just right. You're right on the money. This town. The reason it's gone soft, not unlike the underbelly of a beach turtle, is... Is because of yours truly. In my haste, my well-intentioned adventurous instincts... I fattened, nay, spoiled Dial Town's appetite, quenching this town's wanderlust. Depraving Dial Town's fair populace of an adventure of their very own. Can you encourage them to just go out and capture wild animals? No. Well, no more. I, Theron Rustlebelt, will tear down the walls of this wretched institution, brick by brick if I must. I will painstakingly separate brick from mortar, all in the name of adventure. Okay. Sure, sure, I'll take that. Thank you. Finally, some real firepower. <clears throat> oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, partner. Is it even well-maintained? Oh my god, he's so cute. I'm a simple man with simple pleasures. And lever-action rifle's what I like to call a universal pleasure. Anyhow, I believe you owe us some eggs, Stashy McGee. Ah, yes. Five calcium-coated grid bowling balls coming right up. Thank you, darling. <gasps> My babies. Oh, I, I said it before I even saw it. Logan's here, babies. All right, then. Now it's time to render this wicked institution inoperable. Oh, dear. Chaos is about to happen. Are you just going to open the cages and let the varmints inside run free, then? My visage obscured friend, where's the adventure to be had in that? I will breach this panda penitentiary, penitentiary's walls with dynamite! Oh, dear. Do you just have dynamite laying around all willy-nilly? Yes, Norm, obviously he just has dynamite li li laying around all willy-nilly. <laughs> And with that, I bid you adieu. Norm has great faces. Farewell, my beloved pe panda penitentiary. Oh boy. Huh. Wonder if he's actually gonna- Jesus! It was- Jesus fucking- Ah! You okay, Norm? No, I'm pretty fucking far from- That mustachioed feller could have given us at least- At least given me a warning for he- does he know I have ears under ear? Hey, I do too. Granted, my hearing's been less sensitive since I burnt my eardrums out. Also, let me save. Since we got to the end of a fairly significant say s section. How on earth did you manage that? Uh... Stared at the sun for too long. What? That doesn't affect your... You... <clears throat> so, you lived under that deranged feller for how long exactly? Uh, I didn't have a calendar in my cell, Norm. Long enough. Lord, I can only imagine. You know, I can't tell if I respected you more for seeing what you've lived through up close, or just fear you a little now. How'd you even survive in a place like this? Believe it or not... You can make it through almost anything if there's something to reach for. It's a lot harder with that one, ain't it? Whoa. Oh! Is that... Uh, is that... No, it couldn't be. Is it? Logan, what are you talking about? Oh. Bigfoot! Oh. Bigfoot, my darling, it's you! Oh. Ha Holy shit. 
Is that fucking big? That's fucking Bigfoot. What the fuck? Oh. <gasps> shh, shh. It's okay, baby. It's okay. I, I immediately started shushing before I even saw it. This is Norm. He's a friend. Oh. Yes, baby. He's an ally of the Squatch. Oh. oh, that paper bag. It's... He's covering up his normie face. Isn't that right, Norm? Was Bigfoot re just real the whole time without me knowing? Why didn't anyone try to tell me? Bigfoot is rare, Norm. Very elusive. I'll give him the benefit. He's a sprinting ape man. How in Tarzanation has he evaded capture for God knows how long? Oh. Okay, let's all just calm down. Bigfoot, come out from behind your hands. Oh. There we go, baby. Now the other one. A minute ago, we were negotiating with a mustachioed zookeeper holding a rifle, and now we're coaxing Bigfoot to come out from behind his own hands. Okay, this isn't, like, that weird. This is surreal, and that ain't the word I, I had to use to describe any of my part. Let me try that again. Let me hydrate. This is surreal, and any... <laughs> this is surreal, and that ain't... And... <clears throat> This is surreal, and that ain't a word I had to use to describe any part of my life before I visited this uh, godforsaken town. Ooh. There we go. See, Bigfoot? Norm familiar. Norm friend to Squatch. Remember Nose's Bigfoot from before the dial-up? He's one of those fellas, Bigfoot. He's got lips. Ooh. What did you tell him that for? Now you're making it sound like I want to kiss him. Well, do you? Obviously not. Don't let me using male pronouns throw you off. I've, uh... Well, I haven't personally inspected, uh... Bigfoot could be biologically female is all I'm saying. Are you Bigfoot? Ooh. No, no. Don't do this to me. You can't do this to me, Logan. I'm mixed up enough without having to envision a world where me and Bigfoot are capable of breeding. See, I just mentioned lips. Now you're the one talking about fucking Bigfoot. Why, you? Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Norm, please keep your voice down. He's easily startled and could definitely tear your arms off. You must approach him gently with an apple in your outstretched palm, not unlike with a wild horse. Don't, don't fucking feed wild horses apples. Like, don't feed wild horses in general. <laughs> Unless you are intentionally planning on catching them and domesticating them. Don't do that. Alright. Uh, lord, this is weird. Well, this is all somewhat less weird for Bigfoot, I'm sure. After all, he also lived through a time when folks like you existed and frolicked around freely. To him, you are normal. Huh. Plus, you know, Bigfoot is very familiar with who I am, of course. Alright, forgive my lack of tact, but I gotta ask. How in tarnation are you acquainted with, acquainted with Bigfoot all, folks? Ooh. Yes, Bigfoot. What we have is indeed very special and whimsical. You see, Norm, long story short, I once tried to domesticate Bigfoot. <clears throat> How would that work when you're completely feral? Technically not, but okay. Uh, yeah, see, that was but one unworkable obstacle of many. The biggest one being, this is Bigfoot we're talking about. So, you're the one who taught him to keep his cool around humans then, right? Nah, he had plenty of experience with humans already, I presume. That can't be right. You fought in the Korean War, right? How's your Korean? Ah, I, I could speak it passively years ago, I suppose. If you can learn a language, uh, dropping bombs from planes. Bigfoot can sure as hell learn about humans sprinting through this nation's forests and national parks. Who knows, maybe Bigfoot even managed to learn a few human words. If so, do you think he understands human things like human profanity, or would those words be Greek to him? Good question. Do you know fuck Bigfoot? Oh. Don't phrase it like that. You're playing with fire if you ask Bigfoot stuff like that. 
At least time to post her a bit or put a collar and leash around before you ask a question like that, please and thank you. Whoa, whoa, a moment ago you were all about freedom. Someone's a wee bit of a hypocrite, ain't they? First of all, that ain't a natural sounding use of the term ain't. Secondly, for your information, my moral compass ain't calibrated for a world where Bigfoot just happens to be running amok in the immediate vicinity of me. So, can he speak? Well, no, not really. Not really? What do you mean by not really? Well, you see, I tried to teach him to speak fluent English. But, he, when he wasn't getting it, I kind of got fed up and immediately gave in. Moved on, put a necktie around him, tried to get him successfully to operate a toaster. Ooh. That had a non-American outlet, uh, or plug on the end of it. Even though we're technically in America. Yes, Bigfoot, it was an unmitigated disaster. Bagels should not glow, nor hum faintly upon taking them out of the toaster. But he almost figured it out, Norm. Ah, what the hell. I might as well ask. Bigfoot? Do you have any wisdom you'd like to impart upon us? Something you learned from me, perhaps? Oh, please. Like he's just gonna... Oh, dear. Oh, my. Oh, hem. Me, good. Bigfoot, good. You, good. You, good as are. Bye, Bigfoot. Okay, there he goes, off sprinting into the woods. Forgot that he talked, actually. Huh. Let me save. Okay. Yeah, I saw that, the final calm before the storm. Did you think he decided to leave at the moment because he, he sensed he was no longer needed? That his work here was done? Nah, he uh, just sort of does that. Huh. You know, I have to admit, I'm a tad surprised. Actually, nah. Referring to how I feel right now, simply being surprised would be like calling a twister that sucked up your paw a light breeze. Is that a country expression, or like, he's basically saying it would be the equivalent to, you know, referring to a tornado sucking up your dad being just that, yeah. I don't know why I'm explaining, it's very clear. Look, when we met, I figured your talk of helping folks was nothing more than manipulative horseshit. That you were nothing but a green charlatan trying to sucker me into letting you use the, uh, then... Use and then discard me like this country had. But you helped raise Bigfoot's self-esteem. Is there even a word in the dictionary for the kind of good deed where you give Bigfoot a helping hand? Dehydrate. There certainly ain't one near the Bible, that's for damn sure. I'm sure there is, dude. It's a thick book. It's likely in there somewhere. Is there anyone in this town that you haven't helped? Hmm? I could think of one. It's not too late for you, you know. It's never too late. Hmm. Look, you got your eggs back. whoop to do but... Well, the mayor still has it out for us. We've been bested by her goon... We bested her goon, sure. But considering the length she's gone to to try and take us down... What I'm trying to say is I don't reckon this is going to end with a peaceful heart-to-heart. -heart. Damn well it will. I'll make it. We don't have to forfeit the happy ending that we deserve. Look, I don't want to mislead you. You're a kind-hearted person, Logan. You help people. I ain't like you, and the mayor certainly ain't anything like you. What are you saying? I'm saying I don't want to implicate you in any more of this than I already have. Our deal was for us to partner up till we reached Mayor McCatface and nothing more. Best just step aside when we reach the mayor. Let me sort her out, sort out our business on our own. Unlike me, you ain't too deep in all this just yet. I don't want you to pay the price for what I finally realized I need to sort out. Hang on. 
Pay the price for what I've finally realized. I need to sort out once and for all. Okay, so I was reading it right. And for whatever it's worth, I'm grateful that you brought me back here. That you went to the trouble of helping out the good folks of Dialtown just because you felt like it. If Dialtown had more folks like you and your friends walking around, I wouldn't have had to turn a blind eye for as long as I did. Uh... We should get moving, I reckon. Aren't you taking Theodore's rifle with you? Now, nah, thinking about it further, I think it's best if we just use my single action for what I've got to do. When every hundredth of a jiffy marks the difference between life and certain death, I think it's probably best to stick with what's familiar to you, you know? And also, like, if you're actually going after that, a shotgun's much better for animals because it has a widespread. And not people. Uh, in a video game, but you know. I dropped it on our feet back when the dynamite went off, if you want to grab it. I don't know, two against one seems kind of dirty, you know? I'm trying to improve myself. Be a good human being. Fine, fine, be that way then. But, if you don't take it, then we may as well consider us leaving a grapple, or rifle on the ground for one of the escape baboons to pick up. I'll take it. That's the only moral decision here. I didn't even know. Add a goblin. That ought to shorten the rest of this whole ordeal. Come on, Logan. Let's clear out this crackling cesspit crawling critters. All right. Give me a second to save. Oh, wow. All the animals are just everywhere. Well, this isn't much of an improvement. I'm genuinely surprised that it's gotten this bad. You, We freed the zoo animals. Why are you shocked? I reckon the zoo's walls would have shielded Dialtown from even some of the raging inferno with, and the riled up animals. What walls? The ones that just exploded? Fair point. At any rate, there's only one thing left for us to do. Get to town hall and confront that damn mayor once he... <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Hello, ma'am. You! You stitched together sloth, you viridescent villain! Well, looky who it is. I've been waiting for a long time for... Out of my way, freak. Don't call him that. This is between me and the green one. Excuse me. Me? But I thought, isn't Norm your nemesis? That pistol-wielding ingrate, my nemesis? Sorry, hang on, I had to move something. My office is full to the brim with hippos and fire. Do you even know the full extent of what you've done? Okay, the flaming hippos are news to me, admittedly. You... You've torn apart the social order of Dialtown, the society that I so tirelessly cultivated like a depraved dog in a manger. Listen here, Missy. My friend here ain't here to pick a fight with you. Uh, also, don't call her Missy. That's gonna piss her off. I am. I've been itching to teach you a lesson for a long time. Oh, that's rich. The bumbling hick from bumfuck nowhere is going to teach the mayor of Dialtown a lesson? Norm, you're nothing to me. Before today, you hadn't entered my head once since I kicked you to the curb. Just as I'd planned, you'd spent every day after your exile from Dialtown camped out in the wilderness, stewing in your own bitterness like a petulant toddler stuck in time out. But them. Me? You. I should have torn your head from your shoulders and hurled it into the into the next state just like the other suggested. You should have filled your so full of lead that you could have set off the metal detectors in Minnesota. Oh. Oh, you. It was all going exactly to plan. Every one of my expect uh, specifications diligently met. Then you. 
you dragged him back to town after years of sulky inactivity, divided and deterred by best goons. And now, the whole city has been set ablaze. Years of planning. All disintegrated in a single crime spree. And for what? All for a deranged monster who can't tell where they're not wanted? N now, now, here, Mercy. If you want to pick a... Norm, how are you not getting this? I don't care about you. Frankly, it's beyond laughable that you somehow think that you're in the loop and that you understand any of why this is happening. You're a pathetic little man, Norm, and you want me to consider you a significant variable, variable in all of this? After you just spent the last three years of your life licking your wounds in the middle of uh, wounds in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, too afraid to strike me back. You're nothing. And if you weren't a freak, you wouldn't stand out to me at all. What a bitch. Oh, so I'm the freak. Someone clearly can't see any further than her whiskers. You're as strange as they come, missy. Difference is, you get to boss others around. Tell the honest folks of this town what they have to consider normal. There ain't nothing normal about you, though. No siree. Save, because I'm at a point where I can breathe a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of this has anything to do with what I consider normal, you bagged cretin. This is how Dialtown is meant to be. Oh, what? Meant to be my grandfather's vision. Yeah, well, unlike you, I've actually met your grandpappy. I knew Callum Crown. The real Callum Crab. Not the face plastered on the postcard that you've been clutching for all these years. Hang on. Hell, I saw the dial town that you're trying to recreate with my very own eyes. The dial town of today is nothing but a soulless husk of what it once was. And you're a soulless husk of a later, too, unfit to carry Crown's name or leave this city. Back in our day, Pussycats weren't left in charge of whole cities. Excuse me. I've really invigorated this town, revitalized it. This town has grown, developed, blossomed because of my vision, my leadership. I am the blood that throws through, flows through this town's veins. I've earned my place here. Yeah, yeah. And I soared above a smoke-filled battlefield in this godforsaken war zones for this country. Hell, even jetted off into space, all for Uncle Sam. I've forged new frontiers, sacrificed my old life for this country. And now, thanks to you, I've gone from jettisoning bombs to, from aircraft to being the one jettisoned. Some thanks I gotten for my service, eh? I could say the same for your grandpappy's service to our country. Festering away in that old nursing home without a single memory left in that head of his. He deserved better. You think I don't know that? All of this, I'm doing it for him. Bullshit. None of this is for him. Throwing trash like me and Logan out of dial town. Having your mug replaced with a replica of his, of his old cat's face. You really think any of that's going to make him, make Papa able to love you more than he already... Let me try that again. You really think any of that's going to make Papa able to love you more than he still can? I'm trying to make him remember, damn it. I'm trying to make him remember who he was, what he did for the world. I've done everything I could to make him remember. I've taken him to locations around the town that he would recognize, brought him to other people who knew him. Even God wasn't able to fix what was broken inside of Papa's head. Hell, even my head modeled to the exact specifications to resemble his old cat. The day after they took the bandages off, I visited him in the nursing home. I was so sure that he'd remember that I'd see some life in him once he saw my face, the face of his old cat again. But no. 
As I sat beside him, clutching his hand with mine, my grandfather wouldn't even look at me. He was gazing at something outside. Something frolicking around nearby, just outside of one of his bedroom windows. Is it me? Papa was so transfixed that he wouldn't even glimpse at me. Do you know what he was staring at instead? What? You! Rummaging around, eating from open trash cans in the nearby alley just outside his window. I got my whole face reconstructed just to see that old man smile, and he wouldn't even look at me. Can he technically even still smile? Instead, his gaze, consumed by the trash-eating menace, sauntering about outside. You! You tumor, you pox, you parasite! This isn't my fault. I was so close. My final chance to recreate this postcard. Do you remember it? Uh, it's familiar, yeah? This is Dial Town, as it was in 1966, the year of the dial up. I've tried my hardest to recreate the Dial Town from his time using the image on this postcard. But you... You've been a perpetual thorn in my side since the very moment I first became aware of you. One day, I decided to take him to the park and we spotted your tent, a burlap blemish on the landscape. I tried recreating this photograph, amassed a crowd in Uptown to take the place of the one shown on the postcard hoping that he'd step into the frame, take his place at the front of the crowd. Only to realize that the cinema had been converted into a horror attraction, throwing the whole image off. Apparently, you had a hand in that. Ah, uh, I did, and I didn't. I did, and I didn't. You did. I have witness statements, damn it. Because of you, I had to threaten that Dickens geezer with those draconian legal ramifications for unauthorized site alterations just for get, to get him to revert the outside of that ghastly attraction to his, of his to its former appearance. Next time I passed through Uptown, the front of the bank was plastered with help wanted signs because the bank's reputedly reliable teller up and left on a whim without giving proper notice. Sure enough, as it turned out, you had a hand in that too. It was you. It's always you. I've strived tirelessly to establish a natural order, to cultivate a better, no, a perfect dial town. Only to have you ruin it, each and every time. What? What? So because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, whenever you wanted to recreate your little photograph, they had to just leave town? Mighty fine leadership on your part there, missy. None of this was personal, you cretin. Not at first. Just like you, Logan was nothing more than another problem that needed to be steamrolled. Something in my way. But no. You resisted each and every attempt I made to resolve this peacefully, to remove you without using force. And when I tried that, you burned my city to the ground. Hey, I didn't start the fire. It was always burning some swords. In me. I just, uh, indirectly influenced things that led to the town catching on fire. What I did is probably, like, the manslaughter equivalent of arson, you know? Legally, I'm probably not to blame. Depends on the state. Legally? I don't care about the... I am the law. Are you now? Logan is a free citizen, Missy. They have as much of a right to live here as anyone else. They aren't costing just anyone else the chance to come back. This is my grandfather we're talking about. The visionary who changed the world. The greatest man to have ever lived. You want me to sacrifice the last shot I have to bring him back? All for a... A... A worthless parasite. They've done more for this dial time than you ever have. This worthless parasite has aided your people, Missy. Enriched the lives of your most downtrodden citizens. 
all while you rob the citizens of this here town blind using their hard-earned dollars to line the pockets of you and your cabal. Things ain't gonna get better for this town until you're the one who's out of the picture. Don't shoot her. You have no idea what you're talking about. This backwater town would be nothing without me. You think these backwater hicks would do anything without me? That dial town would have a future without my guidance? They need governance. Do you really see your own citizens that way? Oh, your grandpappy would have hated you. Ooh, that was a mistake. I'm going to fucking kill you. And when I'm done with you, I'll move on to your green friend and splay them out in front of the whole town. I'm going to pick each and every stitch out of their head with my claws and send each and every one of them to my enemies. I said thank you. So they'll know what happens when nobody's like you to mess with Maya Mingus Crown. Now, ha hang on, just a... You ruined enough lives, missy. You're out of chances, out of time, and shit out of luck. No, my sir. I'm putting you down, here and now. Norm, wait. You fool. I have a cat-like ref- I have cat-like reflexes. I could leap faster than a bullet could leave the barrel of your gun. That close? No, you couldn't. You'd miss, and then I'd gouge your eyes out with my razor-sharp claws. Did you honestly think you can leap faster than a speeding bullet? You're out of your goddamn mind. Norm. Go ahead, try. Make my day. You'd miss. I don't miss. So here, so here we are. Together we departed, and together we... Paragonate. Pre pregnant? No, I laid my eggs back in Act 1, don't you remember? Ah, shit, am I pregnant again? Logan, it's a pleasure, as always. Oh, hey, narrator. I feel like we haven't talked in a while. We haven't. Truth be told, I haven't had much to say since you met Norm. Well, I haven't had to say much, rather. I suppose I was more useful back when you were a hermit and didn't care about anyone else. You know, back when you didn't have anyone else to keep you from wandering into oncoming traffic? But now, look at you. Dare I say you've blossomed. I have? You've got a family, Logan. A dysfunctional one, granted. And yes, one full of people who aren't actually related in the slightest. And sure, okay, one of them happens to be Bigfoot. But, as they say, a family which happens to contain Bigfoot is still, by definition, a family. You've come a long way, Logan. Whoa, epic! Oh, hey, you're good at explaining things, right? Apparently so, yes. What's going on right now? I'm not following any of this, to be honest with you. How n how are you not? It's very straightforward. Are you- Norm's going to kill Mayor Mingus. That is, unless she is in fact able to outleap a speeding bullet. In which case, she's going to gouge out his eyes with her claws before he can reload. Huh. Considering what kind of gun that is, unless he only has one bullet in there, he could totally shoot again, but alright. Are you willing to just stand there and let this happen? Well, huh? This is it. Speak up, Logan. This is the ending. The ending of this story is in your lime-hued hat. Yeah, all right, here I go. Norm? Logan, this ain't a good time. We can talk once I... Norm! Okay, hang on. I'm gonna save, because just in case I need extra content, I might come back to this file. So then, I'll save on route, on file 12 after this. Okay. Don't shoot, please. Pardon? Did you seriously think I'm gonna back down this far into our jo I mean, into my journey? But Norm, together we departed. Logan, can't you see... I'm doing this for you, for all of Dial Town. This town doesn't have a hope in hell of surviving under that cat's paw. This town has survived the test of time, and that's precisely because of me. Without my grandfather's leadership, I... 
This town would have been nothing more than a glorified truck stop. I bided my time for long enough. When Pawpaw comes back, he ain't coming back. You're unfit to lead, unfit to serve. You're being retired, like it or not. Norm, don't do this. I'm not letting this, this, this chap faced charlatan just take your only home away from you. Let her take you away from Dowtown. Are you really doing all of this just for me? At this point, I honestly reckon I am. Forget my grudge with the mayor for a moment. If anyone has earned their place in this town, it's you. Wait, how? I'm just a creature, Norm. You don't give up on people. You didn't give up on me. Even now, you're still trying to save my hide. I don't care if I sound nuttier than a squirrel in this shit. I don't care if I sound nuttier than squirrel shit stating it. Dialtown just can't afford to lose someone like you. If you're doing this for me, can I ask you just one favor? Please don't say. Please drop the gun. Logan, she'll... Hang on, let me sit, make a new file on 12. Alright, cool. Logan, she'll... She'll steamroll you. Oh, believe me, I will. See? Shh, I'm trying to save your hide here. She doesn't deserve mercy, Logan. You don't have to do this. Sip, I do. You don't. You have friends now. You don't have to go after all this is over. We outnumber her and we'll stand behind you. That is, if you don't prove her right. Logan, this is your one shot, Norm. To prove years of propaganda wrong. Your one shot to prove the mayor a liar. Uh, I can't believe it. For years I've dreamt of this moment and you just... And you just talked me down from it. You're your own man, Norm. You're the one showing mercy because you care about justice. Deep down, you know this shouldn't be your decision alone. This should be the people's. All right, all right, Logan. I'm backing off. She's all yours. Thank you, darling. All right. Like I said, if we have extra time, I will, like, kind of poke my head into the potential other part of this route. Do you honestly te think that telling your... Do you honestly think... Do you honestly think that telling your hick friend to holster his pistol changes anything? I am beloved by this town. I am the blood that th flows through Dialtown's veins, just like my grandfather was. I am the most essential component of this backwater cesspit. An enforcer? No. A liberator. You couldn't dream of achieving an, even a fraction of what I have. I'm not just going to make Pawpaw Paw remember who he is. Oh, no. I'm going to make him proud, damn it. Alright. Wait, hold on. I've waited for long enough. I'm going to splay you out in front of the entire town. For the first time in your life, your bones are going to see the moonlight. Okay. Shit, shit. This is a real pickle, isn't it? If you talk like a goddamn British person in my company, again, I will do everything in my power to give you a brain an aneurysm, you know. What I need is a deus ex machina, damn it. What if threads are left remaining? What threads are left remaining? What lore hath remained unrevealed? Man, I don't know. Your backstory slash origin, perhaps? I was likely born in a fast food restaurant ball pit while screaming. Dead end. 
Something to do with Randy, maybe. Randy died as he lived. Not relevant to any of this. Move on. That, uh, dead raccoon you picked up a year or so ago against my best wishes? He can't help me now. He fell apart like... <clears throat> he fell apart a year ago like soggy tissue paper. Ew. Here's my pitch. Mayor Margot's postcard. Ask to see it then. Quickly scarf it down like a loose slice of cheese, then book it while she's recovering. I'm going to fade the screen back now. I'm not responsible for what you decide to do once your autonomy is restored. Hey, before you kill me to fucking death with your gloved hands and such, can I see your postcard up close? Okay. What kind of trogla- I think troglodytely, troglodicitly. What kind of troglodicity trusting tabby do you take me for? If I handed you the postcard, you'd likely just devour it like a slice of white cheddar. Yeah, obviously I would do that. Do you have a problem with that, huh? This is who I am, Mayor Mingle. I am many things. A maniac, a tax cheat, a felon. But most of all, I'd like to think that I'm a tax cheat. I hate paying taxes. Shut up. Okay. And you expect me to hand you a family heirloom, nay, a family artifact, to any maniac, felon, and slash, or tax cheat who just so happened to ask? Yeah. You, you must truly be a maniac if you think that I part with a genuine surviving sample of my grandfather's handwriting. Handwriting? What? Oh, there's an old love letter scrawled onto the back of the postcard. One my grandfather wrote for my grandmother back. Mother? Mother back before the dial-up. But the most important thing on this postcard is the vision. His vision seen on the front. That's Dial Town. His Dial Town. But... I heard you and Norm speak both about what Callum would have wanted. I've never actually heard Callum speak for himself. Outside of heavily reverberated hallucinatory snippets of dialogue, that is. I'm sorry, what? Actually, for what it's worth, I happen to agree with them, Missy. For all that hemming and hauling we've done on this issue, we're both speaking fur, Callum. Wouldn't it be nice to hear what he has to say just this once, even if it's not on the very topic? Look, I know what's best here. This letter and all it contains is my family property. My family. My birthright. Mine. Read it, Missy. I want to hear what it says. You can't make me. Actually, I can. Hand it to Logan, or I'll fire. I can't read. If you want to know what it says so badly, why don't you just read it yourself then, huh? If you're close enough to hand me the postcard, you're close enough to disarm me. Pass it on over to them. You'll give it back when you're done reading it, you know. <sighs> Go ahead, then shoot me. Just try, Mangus. All right, all right. One glance, then straight back. I can't read. Let's see here. See here, it says... Oh, right, I can't read. Yeah, exactly. As everyone else here can recollect. Logan, just hand me the postcard. I'm fine with you getting close. That was the plan, after all. No, hold on. Let me try. I've got a few words on the last one. Let me try to sound it out. D dial town... Nine to ten six to silks hot dog. <laughs> They're not getting it. Hand it back before they devour it. Logan, for the love of all that's holy. Just hand me the No, I can do this. I just need to imagine what he'd have written. Oh god. My dear Mark. There we go. 
It pains me to be away from Zion Ten. Mm hmm But I'm glad it's still a town of misfits, just <laughs> as it was when I left. As the town Ooh. motto goes, all are welcome here in Zion Town. Uh huh. Huh. All are welcome here in Dialtown. Are you kidding me? Th that's quotes out of context. It ain't. What part of all didn't you hear? Y'all means all, y'all. No. No, I didn't. I didn't want to. Save. You two were rogue, dangerous elements. I didn't... You gave me... No other choice. Dear, Dear Lord, there's really no excuse in any of this. The audacity. You really reckon you knew what your grandpappy wanted better than he did, huh? Any wrong that I've done, I've done for Dial Town. He would have understood that I merely did what I had to do to save his vision if he found out what I've done after I bring him back. Right? Mangus. This is definitely a hit to my formerly immaculate worldview. Am I? Am I a monster? Good lord. After spending so long on my own, unable to bring a plan lost to time, his vision to fruition, the words on the back of this postcard seeped away, leaving only the happy photo on the front. And once my last connection to Pawpaw Paw faded, I huddled around the only warmth I could still feel when I gazed at this postcard, my burning desire to bring him, his world, back to us. I missed him so much, Logan. But how can you miss a man you never really met? He lost his memory before you were born. I feel that in a way, I have met him. Every time I see someone else make a call on their phone head or write using their typewriter head. Every time I see someone walking around with one of his prosthetic limbs. There's a tiny piece of him in everything around us. I see him everywhere. I just wish he could see me, too. I just wanted Papa to tell me that he was proud of me. Hey, now. You've achieved a hell of a lot. The last time I saw him, he actually looked at me and called me Mama, somehow thinking that I was my late grandmother, and... He asked me if I'd do it all over again with him if I was given the chance. I... I obviously didn't want to tell him who I really was, that Mama was no longer with us. Forcing him to re-experience that heartbreak all over again, only to, for it to be lost alongside its fleeting lucidity moments later. I'm gonna take an aside. If you have a family member who is in a situation that Callum is, whether it be dementia, Alzheimer's, any of that, if they are insistent, and obviously I'm not going to say do this directly, consult with their team, because usually they're in memory care units by this point, um, but don't pretend, so I'm gonna, like, put together a scenario here. Say you have a family member who's, like I said, has the, uh, these end-of-life memory term issues. If they say, go, oh... Um, when will my XYZ, I'm just gonna use wife, so, say it's the husband and his wife passed years ago. Oh, when is my wife gonna be back from work? Don't say something like, oh, she's late at the office, she'll be back whenever. That is not what you want to do, because it causes even more confusion in that feedback loop. I'm not gonna tell you what you should say, but don't do a situation like this where you pretend that something is still going on just because you don't want to, you don't have the heart to break their heart. But, like, don't lie 
just to make things easy. Like, you don't have to be a dick, but don't fucking lie. <laughs> anyway. So I answered as if I were her, responding just as I hoped she would have. Yes, my songbird, I would. He stared off, now content, his gaze slowly drifting towards the floor, and didn't say another word. I would have given anything to give him that chance, Logan. A chance to make Paw Paw proud. Ma'am, for what it's worth, I knew President Crown, and... Recent mishappenings aside, if he were here right now, I think he'd tell you that he's mighty proud of you. You said earlier that he would have hated me. Right, and you call me a monster, to be fair. I'm happy to go back on my word in this one instance if you are. I didn't mean to become the monster that I falsely accuse you of being, Norm. I can control everything that happens in this godforsaken town. Dialtown's roads, prisons, taxes, laws, and the very public itself are all mine to puppeteer. For crying out loud, I command God today, and he knew to respect my authority. But the one thing I can't do is release Papa from his own head. Well, if every inch of this town is entirely under your jurisdiction, then boy, do you have a mighty fine mist clean up. After this fire goes out and these flaming critters are all rounded up and removed from the streets of Dialtown, you'll have to start slapping mortar on bricks. Yes, quite. Norm, may I ask, would you know anything about construction? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did roofing and bricklaying for a couple of years before I joined the Air Force. Why'd you ask? If this whole excruciating escapade has taught me anything, it's that I am surrounded by incompetent hacks. And I simply cannot trust a single one of them with the task of leading Dial Town's, downtown Dialtown's reconstruction efforts. You are a worthy adversary, and one who perhaps almost best in me. So I can't think of anyone better suited to spearhead the effort of rebuilding my city. So what? You exiled me, tried to kill me, and now you want me to help rebuild the very town you threw me out of in the first place? Yes, yes, and you pressed a gun to my head, effective moments after burning half my city to the ground. In fairness, Theodore is mostly responsible for the ensuing inferno. Fucker had dynamite. I'm lucky my face is still has its signature skin on it. You see what I mean about the utter incompetence of my lackeys? Moron. And it goes without saying, Norm, that if you were to do this for me, you would naturally be granted a royal pardon, and with it the freedom to live here in peace. But does it also go with saying? Hang on, hydrating. Yes, which is exactly why I just said it. Oh, nice. So that means I. So that means I get to stay with my new friend. Uh, I mean, yeah, all right. This is acceptable, I guess. Well, on one condition, it is. All right, state it. If I'm sticking around, I won't turn a blind eye to injustice. Fire him to Quirchman of yours and. Your vernacular makes it difficult to tell if you intended for queer to mean strange or gay. Why would you interrupt me to point out such a needless distinction for those two clowns? Apologies. Continue. Hire me as your new sheriff. No. What if I was to use my own guns, which means you could add the cost of my pistol and ammunition to your budget in order to launder a few hundred bucks and buy yourself some fancy-schmancy expensive milk? Astounding. You're not even my sheriff yet, and you're already corrupt. Yeah. Well? Yes, obviously, I want the crime milk, the tastiest and most forbidden dairy product. Good. First mandate of sheriff, we need to talk about some of your laws. You know, your particularly draconian ones. We can discuss them later. Alright, then. I'm out. Good luck finding someone else to lead your construction effort. I, I somehow was British and Southern at the same time. Your construction effort. <clears throat> Guess you'll have to put little Billy in charge of the explosive you'll be using for demolition of one of those burned building husks, huh? Oh, 
Good lord, I'd rather fake my own death and move to a roach tell in Vegas than even consider that timeline for a moment longer than is legally necessary. Fine. Fine. I'll agree to one single change now, and we'll discuss the rest later. Lower your tax rate by no less than 25% for all citizens of Dialtown. Absolutely not. This town needs every cent allocated in the budget for its various nectarines to fu fund my rigorous beauty regimes. Beauty res- You're a cat. Cut taxes. You don't understand. Lowering taxes by 25% across the board would create a budget deficit of pro approximately $1 million. Where do you expect me to get that kind of money from, huh? What's your average yearly salary? Well, it's currently around one million do- Uh-huh. Miss Public Servant. Fine, fine! I guess I'll eat nothing but baked beans for a year, whatever. That's a mighty fine start, Caddy Wampus. I reckon that ought to even things out quite a bit. Now the taxes and sheriffdom are out of the way, I only have one last question remaining. What about Logan? Oh, who cares about- Ah! care. Let my green friend here run amok and frolic around this fine town whenever they please. They ain't harming anyone with their tomfoolery. Oh, alright, alright. Fine. Logan, your exile has hereby been lifted and you've been pardoned for the inexcusable sin of being your true self. Oh, epic, yeah. How dare you make me say epic. <laughs> you get to live in Dial Town in a house of your very own. Tent. In an apartment of your very own. Tent. I'm not letting you take a valuable public space with a tent. Fine, fine. In a tent located in a secluded tent at the park. Oh, for the love of... Fine, in a tent at the park then, I guess. But you can't hurl lit fireworks at swans that wander near your tent anymore without paying the same fine that everyone else does for causing illegal swan-related explosive incidents, that is. <laughs> Just a mighty large sacrifice, but alright, I guess. Your sacrifice is appreciated. A new day is dawning in Dial Town. I can feel it. Loverly. Jesus Christ. Hello? So thanks for being with us today. Okay. Lauren. After a years long exile, you're back in Dialtown. That's right, Rachel. Hopefully for good this time. Riveting. Could you please enlighten us as to what you've experienced and learned since you're now recanted exile? She's a teleprompter, I just realized. Well, I'm an old soul, and boy, have I seen a lot. Just uh -huh. as much after the exile as before, I guess. Like it or not, <laughs> solitude changes a man. Forces you to address a fundamental part of yourself that uh -huh. most people never even see. But I find that abject misfortune tends to either totally break or make a man, you know? Uh -huh. Plus, I guess it wasn't so bad being alone for so long. I had good company. Aww. Fascinating. Is there anything you'd like to say to the residents of Dialtown in the spirit of moving forward? Uh -huh. No profanity, please. <laughs> Why, yes, there is. Look. I spent many years stewing in my own acrid juices. Aww. Wretched imagery aside, I know better than anyone that a caustic heart consumes its owner. Mm -hmm. When society itself has transformed you from a man to an outcast, made you out to be a monster, mm -hmm. it can be difficult not to become the very oh, that's monster fun. they claim you are. It can be difficult not to prove them right. Yeah. I came close to doing just that. But someone saved me. Oh. Oh. Me more in my. my that sure is a uh, picture. When you say Green Messiah, is me. are you talking about the goblin who lives in a tent at the park? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. I am. Which can be deceiving, you know. <laughs> Just as I was misjudged, they've been too. Really? Mm -hmm. so, what did they teach you? Their lessons came from a multitude of epiphanies. Taught me that my happiness is in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is gonna ensure that I live a happy life. That I'm good just as I am. Shut up, I'm not tearing up. Leave me alone. Change myself for the sake of being similar to other people, but instead, seek a future where I'm the best version of myself. Not the person the world expects me to be. But most of all, my watermelon hued friend gave me mm -hmm. hope. 
something I lacked for a long time. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how badly I missed it till I felt it again. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is, with someone like that, someone so strange and whimsical, mm -hmm. someone who barely resembles a human, so different and spurned, could hold such inherent wisdom and contentedness. <laughs> Maybe there's hope for me after all. Maybe mm -hmm. for all of us. Maybe things can get better. Aww. Maybe we can make the world brand new again. Inspirational. Yeah. Norm, thank you so much for coming on the show. I just have one question for you mm. before we sign off. Where is your green friend? Who knows? Could they not join you here today? Oh, I'm sure they have a very important event to attend. <gasps> there is. Bevis. Could it be? It's not letting me save. Oh my. Leave it to Dial Town to have an extremely weird ending. They're repulsive. Just like the beast that spawned them. I hate every single one of them. Especially that one. This was a waste, damn it. This has all been for naught. Now, to credit some truly deranged people. All right, hell yeah. Do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Director Dogman. Doing a big create of many such things. Setting the whole rotten thing into motion. Bastard. Ogre lore, unsolved. Yours, yours Houndly, Dogman. Bork. Nathan Hanover. Composing the Dial Town soundtrack, which is awesome. Being British, sinful. H hire them for your weddings and such. Oi. Jesus Christ. John Stringer. Drawing Dial Town's title screen art, which is great. Drawing Dial Town's cinematic slides, which are also great. Being a bloody top bloke. Ah. Philly Morg. Phil Morg, you are a swine. I am a drunk canine. You may be loud, rude, but you have attitude. At the end of the day, you are Morgman. Toler you tolerate me. You are Pork Titan. Modeling each of Dial Town's wretched slimy 3D models. Testing and quality assurance. I hate Phil Morg. Oh dear. Burp Day Coyote. Drawing dot the Mingles note art. A yelp yelping to call a noise a coyote makes a bark would be too generous, correct? Exactly 1,024 Benkies. Uh. I don't know what that means. Canid Cosmos. Designing Dial Town's logo as well as Dial Town's town flag. Drawing my hideous mug in game, thanks. Displaying copious amounts of patience whenever I sent a weird meme involving a purple fast food mascot her way. Snaz amazing. Drawing Dial Town's achievement icons. Not being British, can't thank you enough for that. Just look at that face, horrifying. Voice actors in order of introduction. Callum Crown was Nathan Advent. Norm Allen was Ryan Summers. Rachel at Dialtown News Network was Finley Smith. Body models. Like four of them. Me. Oliver. Hoodwink. Thanks, man. Karen, Coffee Nat. Norm, Shanbo, Epic. Mingus, just the head, salvage. Miscellaneous, licensed from Null Entity. Generous folks who have given me money before there was a dial town. 
uh, Nadab, Cora P, whatever, Tangerine, Reminis, Dra 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 Dranchin Rabbit, Sam Farham, uh, Derpy382, Eric Stinsky, Doffy, Leverett, Blue underscore Wineglass, Cecil G, Proteus, The Cursed God Charlie, Top Hat Dash Co, Liu, Lu, uh, Tobias, Prezzo, Moxie F, Mani, Lucy Maddox, Cleveland Rock, Starry Sport, Cork, Acneus, Akanius, Raccoon, Obi, Sam, Takashigi, Bobby BW, Amigo Andreas, Fluffy, 99211, Molly, Alexandra, Nicia, Nicia? I don't know. Attr attribution that was legally demanded of me. The, uh, composers, blah, blah, more composers, special thanks, recently, Maxwell Plum Plombo, Callum Neal, for their JS plugin support, Yanfly, Arcania, Heim, uh, ba 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 ba, all the free sounds. It's rare that you see a game actually fully credit these people this clearly. Uh, usually it's like a lot more hidden, but I'm not gonna be mad at him like fully and clearly crediting free sound. Is very good. All right, and now sound Bible. All right, but yeah, that is Dial Town. As far as tomorrow, I, I by the way, I'm still trying to decide if I want to. I don't think I act, even though I saved. I don't want to like do the split route here. I may just kind of wander around, um, for at least until. Uh, 10. But, we'll see. Oh, and now, uh, Flickr credits. Hmm. By the way, it is always better to over-credit than under-credit. Uh, if ever you have a choice between the true two, always over-credit. Because, fun fact, if you're wondering why the Roblox Hurt sound isn't what it used to be, they did not credit the people who made that sound and they just it and the person was like hey actually i don't like that you're making money off of this um it's the same reason why uh the people who made crazy frog scott cotham hello oh hang on upcoming end screen oh right duh he made a fucking five nights at freddy's game there is one person left to thank when you are ready you may proceed to the final screen of the game. Please don't jump scare the shit out of me. Yay! Thank you! No, thank you, darling. Please don't jump scare me. Please don't. I don't want it. I'm trying to hit enter. It's not doing anything. I know. Thank me. Can we move on? I'm scared I'm going to get jump scared. Okay. We're good. Alright. You know what? Let's just fuck around for the last little bit. Alright. We'll just do chapter one and two. Uh, nah, we're fucking around, so we might as well not. Oh ho, it's me, Mr. Dogman. Hello, welcome to Dial Town Phone Dating Sim. You must now answer this clown, this hound's questions three. All right, let's do it. What's your name? No, no, no. Last round. Really? That's your name? Oh, pun. I'm so sorry. I'm just how God made me, dog. I am God. Anywho, second question. I want to be a typewriter, sure. <laughs> nice. Enjoy having to use your own head to write the Mishman fiction just to be able to afford the occasional glass of turnip water. Sounds to be frank. Amazing. 
I never wondered if it was possible to castrate a player before. Now, final question. Uh, I don't know. Huh, not sure what to fill in on this night of the questionnaire. Questionnaire? There's no paper, you're just asking me questions. Do not question the hound. Warning, NPCs will occasionally refer to you by your species, Goblin, where perfect gender neutral equivalent terms are not readily available. Can I just play the game now? I don't know, can you? I, I'm not paying attention, hang on. Alright then, get out of my sight. Alright, let's just fuck around. There I am. Hmm. You, sinful creature. Seems like I'm alive again. Oh, ow. Darn. I hate it when I do that. Hmm. My non-specific re reproductive organs are firm and ripe. Must be getting ready to hatch. Time for reproduction is now. Ugh. I must find a dark, dank pit to lay my eggs in. Fairground. Fairground is dark, dank, and greasy. Plenty of supply, su plentiful supply of carnival food nearby. Yes. I must go to the carnival. <gasps> Take a chair time. Mission green. Go to the fun fair. Take a Jerry. Well, there we have it. The carnival. So close and yet so far. Must gain entry. Must penetrate defenses of mile high railings. I mean, those railings are hardly a mile high. Bastard narrator, I need to lay eggs. Well, you could always, you know, go through the main gate. A plan so crazy, it might just work. Hello, Jerry. Greetings, Ticket Buffoon. My name is Jerry, but okay, my green acquaintance. How can I help you today? I wish to gain entrance, Terry of Tick. J Terry? Jerry of Ticket Booth. Well, do you wish to buy a ticket, Goblin? Nah, it's fine. I don't want to piss behind any of your rides this year. I simply wish to find a fetid hole to lay my eggs in. Okay, you definitely need to buy a ticket from us if you want to do that. Rats. How much would that cost? Two dollars. Fudge, I have zero. Tell me, young squire. Would you accept tales, stories, and other such whimsical parables as payment? No, no, I would not. Ah, shoot, I was so close, too. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you that gremlin who lives in the tent next to the playground at the park? Oh no, my cover has been blown. Look, goblin beasts of indiscriminate, indiscriminate species and gender. I'm only telling you this because your stench is gonna drive away customers if you loiter around here uninhabited, uninhibited for any longer. It's Valentine's Day today. Uh, Valen what? It's a day designed by the chocolate slash flowers industry where single dads drink a bottle of gin for dinner. Wait, why am I explaining this to you? You're barely sentient. And too. We both know that's a lie. Look, sentience and drunken single dads aside... Valentine's Day is a day for people who are, you know, in love. Love? What on God's green earth is that? Love is well. Love is what happens when two grown-ups start craving more than just business handshakes and platonic ice cream breaks. Love makes people want to go on romantic ice cream dates and drink all kinds of exotic elixirs and nectars together. When two grown-ups are in love, they'll make joint bank accounts together and go to the movies together and feed popcorn kernels to the rats and cockroaches there. 
And then one day, if you're lucky, your partner will take away the kids forever and go marry Steve, the guy in your accounting firm who works in the same cubicle as you but makes 6% more yearly, and you can finally have a good night's sleep. Sounds rather specific. That's love, my scary friend. Speaking of which, we have a promotion on today, just for Valentine's Day. Two tickets for the price of one for couples who are in love. If you can somehow convince someone to bring you here, you can, I don't know, force them to pay you in like a parasite. Granted, it'd take a real bastard to- Mission acquired. Oh, god fucking. Must source mate. Okay. Uh, go do that. Away from here. Just you see, Mr. Ticket Jerry. Mr. Jerry Ticket, I'll be back with a smoking hot babe. Please don't come back at all. Scuttle away. Oh, I will be back, Ticket Jerry. Probably not, though, because that's probably going to take me longer than that to do whatever, and I'm not playing this again. At least not immediately after this. Chapter 1, the Funfair Date. Because honestly, we're just going to wander around town and see who we can find. Not even planning on going anywhere specific. Or at least to start any route in specific. Alright, lovely. Ah, uh, tent, sweet tent. To find a well-functioning member of society to latch onto like a parasite, you'll have to leave your tent, you know. Great stuff. Let's go lay these eggs. Brilliant. But leave what I do. You can bring up the main menu at any point using the escape key, including during dialogue and player choices. This allows you to tweak the options and save the game at any point. Use this if you want to do something but feel as though you may get arrested or killed. What the fuck was that? All right. Uh, let's go to Uptown Dial Town. All right, let's see what we can do. Ah, uh, Uptown Dial Town. Home of everything and everyone. Not cool enough to be in Downtown Dial Town. So, what now? What now, indeed? Let's see. Hmm. Have I been to the phone shop? I think I have, but I'm gonna go there just in case. Yeah, I've been here. Why'd you wander in here last round? A phone shop of all places? I doubt they do repair for people with stitched together flesh heads, you know. If that's what you're looking for. I mean, forget the flesh thing, I doubt there's any repairing what's up with you as of late. Something wrong last round? The... the phone. Someone... Someone answer the goddamn phone! Hold your horses, sweetie. Hold your horses. What's that? What are you hollering for, hun? Where am I? Is... is this heaven? No, wait, this place is far too drab for that. The, the river sticks, perhaps? Oh, I get you, cause of all the phone cases. Those ain't skulls, hun. They're just empty cases. I don't understand. Do you wanna understand? Well, yeah, what is this place? We're standing in Dial Town's phone store. Shop's near a hundred years old now, set up by my pa, God rest his soul. Shop initially sold whole telephones, but with them being so common nowadays... Well, we've adapted to fit the current market. Not every purchase has to break the bank, you know? A hundred pieces sell just as good as the one complete phone I find. Same thing goes for most aspects of life I also find. There's nothing wrong with building yourself up bit by bit. Now, if you want to know about something specific, specific, I'm sure I can oblige. Alright, let's see. What kinds of customers do you normally get in here? All sorts. Healthcare ain't exactly the most affordable, and often enough, it's some small in the head sacked up. 
the recipe, shot transmitter, etc., etc. So most people don't want to, or rather can't, afford to go to a dock over at a small malfunction in part. So that's where I come in, or rather my shop and my parts do. With a level head, all it takes is a steady hand and instructions, of course, to replace the faulty part. Of course, to each their own. I still say people should see a doc for bigger issues, if possible. Anyway, that's how things have been for most of my life, but as a recently different part sale. What kinds of parts sell now? Cosmetics. I see lots of youngins come in here from time to time looking for whatever pieces I don't need. Slap them on their heads and bam, you got a hybrid head. Why? Ah, it's just them expressing themselves. They're breaking down old societal rules, old concepts. See, funny thing is, society seems to be changing with new people coming in and old people leaving. Back in my day, you were what others said you were, and that was that. Were things simpler back then? Things were cleaner, I guess you could say. You knew your role. But clean ain't perfect. Just meant folks are suffering out of earshot. Very true. Easy to make a beautiful photo when the trash is shoved out of the frame, ain't it? And there's our framing for Act 3. It's one of my favorite things that you can totally miss. Uh, but this is very direct framing for Act 3. Now, folks are speaking up for themselves, and people miss the simple times. But the times were never simple for the folks who were speaking up for themselves, who are now speaking up for themselves, and change is never party. Out of curiosity, what do you think? I think people should seek happiness. I'm glad to hear that, friend. I've always found the idea of living as something you're not mighty ridiculous, given that we have the technology to change ourselves. Humans are just incomplete masterpieces, presuming we can truly be considered as such. And art ain't never finished, it's abandoned. Don't ever give up on yourself. We can all change. Alright. Tell me about yourself. I just want to talk to this person. You want to know about me? Oh, well, I'm not all that interesting. I've just been alive long enough to hear a few interesting notions, meet a few interesting people. I'm old if your eyes ain't doing so hot. You don't look old. Well, okay, I guess your typewriter head is old. Sorry, I meant optical sensors or whatever they're called now. <laughs> right, you get the Transformers fan to be like. Way I see it, if you it, if you see with them, they're eyes. Don't matter if your head's phone, typewriter, or whatever, have you? Anyway, my story ain't much to tell. If life was a story, I'm sure I'd be one of those bit characters. You know the sort. You already are. Just sitting around in the same place all day waiting to be found so I could share what I know about our funny little world. But um, Tish, my father would probably have been a better person to talk to, you know. He scattered up stop here a few shakes after Telegram went the way of the dodo. Would you believe my pops old Callum crowned his first telephone back in 42? We've been in dial town for a long time, our line. In a way, I like to think we're part of old history, even if only just. Who's Callum Crown? Oh, you know. No, I don't know. The inventor, the man who built the first phone head. Fella became the mayor of this here town, and then the prezzy of this here country. Of course, this was all just for the worldwide dial-up, mind you. If it weren't for him, we'd still have our old fleshy heads, and the world would be nothing like it is now. Did you know Callum personally? Most of the town did, then, when I was a little girl. Couldn't avoid the fellow when he was campaigning for mayor and then president. Something about him was... infectious. He knew just what he wanted. He had a vision, a dream. Fellas like him, it don't matter what they do or where they go. They just attract power. 
Sometimes that ain't the best thing for everyone, though. And that's the last I'll say on that subject. So wait, you were alive before the worldwide dial-up? Yeah, when I was a little gal, the whole world had flesh heads. No phones, typewriters. I mean, we had phones and typewriters around in our homes and businesses, sure. Just not mounted onto our shoulders. That would have been considered weird. So, were animals different too? Sure, they had flesh heads too, all of them. No one had a mechanical head back there, human or otherwise. Huh. Neat. So, if you got another question, I suppose I'll hear it. How is this place still in business? Selling these telephones seems a bit like selling air since, you know, half of all the people have telephones built onto their shoulders. Well, like I said when you first came in, we I still move phones, don't you worry. Just piece by piece. Just gotta, you know, know how to adapt. Speaking of actually selling pizzas. Can you take me to the fun fair, please? Believe me, hun, I'm flattered. But, no, I got a store to manage, I'm afraid. Is it me? No, I mean... Look, hun. I'm sure you'll find someone who's into whatever it is that you are. Keep searching. God knows I get weird customers in here if you know where to look for them. And no one will be bound to take you, so don't give up. Thanks for the encouragement, Gabby. Yeah, yeah. Now, you gonna buy something or... I'm fine, thanks. See ya. <laughs> Alright, take care now, you hear? Alright, let's see. What shall we go investigate? Let's go to downtown Dialtown, I think, maybe. Because I know exactly what happens at the only other places you can really go. Alright, to downtown Dialtown with us. Lovely. Alright, cool. Ah, uh, downtown Dialtown. Where the air tastes like crystal meh, and the hair tastes like smog. So, what now? Alrighty. Let's see if we can get a unique nearby passerby. Ah, oh well. Hello, hello, Den. This is the self insert of the guy who does the music. You need some Den, mate. Who are you? The name's Nathan I know the governor. Please forgive me for my terrible Cockney accent. I really can't do even a halfway decent version of it. Bloody well chat to make your acquaintance I am. Sorry for me, Ice Mate, but I'm running quite late for a very important date. What's gotten you in a hurry, then? I know we've already talked to him, but I don't care. Well, I've got a charity gig that I'm holding to raise money for alcoholic dogs, yeah? Why, pest them mongrels are. Gotta get to, to, to conduct me synthonic orchestra. But I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. And if you're quick, I'll be right chuffed. What does synthonic mean? I don't be naff, surely you know. Nah, no, not a clue. Alright, so, imagine a ghost, yeah? But like, it's stuck in a bloody contraption, isn't it? And it's all around from the inside the machine, yeah? But the screams are like music and death, isn't it? I understand even less about the synthonics now, thank you. Don't mention it, governor. Just leave the magic to me, then. Can you take me to the fun fair, please, Dad? God oh, blimey, that sounds like a right buzz. But unfortunately, can't. C gotta go to me concert, and I'll be right back at after I. What are you saying? Oh God, am I being mugged? Nah, mate, you're right. No beef. Oi, so we done our little nada then, or what? I'll let you go then. Good luck with your whatever. 
Right, get this done so. Then get home, watch some footy, have a palm my own chips. Nice meeting ya. Ta-ta. Talk to a different nearby passerby. Damn it. Okay, fine. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm sorry, Roger. I love you to death, man. But you gotta work on those nerves. Surely saying hello once would suffice, no? I, I know, Peter. It's just the, the green, green one's looking right at us. I th think they want something? Well, turn around and ask the nice goblin what they want. R right, of course. Hey, nice to meet you, friend. The name's Roger. Hey, Roger. How about you bring me to the fun fair, huh? Uh, oh, jeez. I'm flattered, really. But our lunch break just ended, so we gotta get back to work. Ed too, redhead. Firstly, my name's Peter. It's nice to meet you, Peter. Yes, hello, hello. Secondly, no offense, but I'm married. But, but Peter, didn't you just tell me that Carolyn wanted to spice things up in the... Ixnay on the Edrin Bay, Roger. W whoops, my bad. Sorry, that's on me. Ah, shit, Italian. My mortal nemesis. I don't speak that. It's pig Latin, but okay. Once again, I'm cock-blocked by Benito Mussolini himself. W once again? But please don't ask them any branching questions, Roger. S sorry, my- my- bad. Anyway... We're happy to answer any questions provided you ask them quick. Our lunch break will be over any minute now, and the moment it ends, we're officially back on the clock. Gotta get back to work, you know. Hey, nice hat. Hey, hey, thanks. If I, f I find it makes my head complete. Why doesn't your friend have a hat? I don't do hats, I'm afraid. I can see this this divide between you. This festering gap growing in your friendship. The difference of ideologies. It will only lead to war. Uh, hey, I I'm cool with the fact that he doesn't have a... Shh. Hey. Shh. That was loud. Shh, sweet summer child, be silent. Only darkness now. Peter, help. Who are you two, anyway? What do you contribute to the world? Th that's an existential question. W what is a man's worth? His merits, his morals, his legacy... I think they wanted to tell them... Wanted us to tell them about the daily grind, Roger. Oh, s sorry. We work over at the Dialtown Mechanics plant, the one off of Old Main Street. The one that used to be Crown Mechanics, of course, over 50 years ago, before the rebranding. Anyway, me and Peter work there together. He does assembly. And I'm his manager. Wait, you're his manager? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. You see, one afternoon, our old manager ran onto the assembly floor pa for papers shuffling frantically in hand. He said our plant was going through some new changes, and one of us was going to be promoted to his old position. Was he promoted? To a corpse, yes. Oh, shit. Nasty bit of business, that. Turns out the guy had ties with the Dialtown mob, and the cops have finally caught up with him. Ended up jumping out of a four-story window into one of the trampolines we just manufactured. What a lousy day to learn that the trampoline machine wasn't printing any of the actual trampoline parts bar the frame and springs. I was so worried that once he died, the cops would just start shooting at me. I figured, phone lore, if he could pass his old job to me, then maybe he could pass his crime to me, you know? Regardless, I persisted and made it through with a brave face, though. You hid and cried under the desk of the whole ordeal, actually. It, yeah, but they didn't know that. Say, why'd he pick you to be the manager and not your friend? Your friend seems far less incompetent at being a person. Oh, the old manager said it was for my d diligence and experience, expertise. Roger's assembly line was the closest to the door, and thus the closest to the manager right as he answered. 
Okay, this is all making a lot of sense. Speaking of, we have to get back to the plant. But wait, I thought you said Roger was the manager. Who's powerful enough to reprimand Roger for being late? Oh, n nobody. I just have to get back to make sure nobody else is running late. Speaking of... Never mind what you what I desire. I will now part. And hey, if you ever need a job, I will never work, never toil, never slave away for mine daily bread. I will die as I live, unemployed and wearing stolen bowling alley shoes. Goodbye, one and all, Roger and Peter. S see you on the flip side. Nice meeting you, I guess. Alright, read the notes on a nearby telephone pole. Let's see if we can find anything different here. Alright, a nearby telephone pole directs to... Whatever. God, what the fuck? You hope to notice something. Anything that'll somehow help you get into the fun fair. Hmm, let's see. Okay, let me read the first ad put aloud. Why I Foigles the Clown. What the fuck is this? Clowns don't even exist anymore. But don't you believe in Bigfoot? Whole different kettle of fish. Bigfoot is real, clowns are not. Bigfoot is a feral primordial ape man who lives in the woods and is only ever seen through hazy disposable camera footage. Exactly, he might as well be my uncle. Clouds are literally just people with funny red noses. How is that any less easy to comprehend? You think clowns are people? People don't lay eggs. You lay eggs. My point exactly. I mean, imagine having a head covered in disgusting flesh. With a red, bulbous tumor attached to your face. That fucking honks. They have gigantic shoes, and yet, and yet, they drive around in comedically tiny cars. They blow up balloons and dance jigs at the drop of a hat. As if such absurd antics are menial. They are truly wretched creatures. Huh. I had no idea you felt this way. Awful beings. Okay, so should we skip over Frongle's advent then? Fuck that, read the clown page, it might be funny. But you said... Fuck it, you're impossible. Read the clown page. Read the clown page. I'm reading it, I'm reading it. Let's see here. Hiya, boys and girls. I'm Frongles the Clown. I really need money. I bought a real clown. I may not be licensed, but I'm all now so all dabbling in pump, uh, pump, pump, pumping in dentistry. I'll do just about anything for four dollars. Please hire the clown. It'll do. I'll do anything. I'm living in a storm drain right now. Ha ha ha! Very funny. You think any task is too lowly for this clown? Four dollars. By God, you can afford that. Come on, I have a chip to feed. There's a whole page of this. Skip to the end, then. Yours hogfully, Froggles the Clown. Honk honk. Huh. Wow. I think I got whiplash from here. The, I think the whiplash I got from hearing that is going to make me vomit. I don't have a corporeal form, and I think I might vomit. Wait, what even are you? Physically? I guess I'm like a disembodied voice. Wait, how does that even work? Are you seriously asking the disembodied voice that only you can hear to rationally explain itself to you? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking you to do. You're fucking crazy, man. Stop following me around. That's good advice, so I'm just gonna refuse to follow it. Okay, fuck it. Let's see what else is on here. Oh, here's another one. Rent a chimpanzee. Good start. Hey, you! Yeah, you! Hey, you want to take my chimpanzee out for tea? He's a little on the feral side now that he's reached full maximum maturity, but he's just as adorable as ever. Just don't let him near kids, pets, open spaces, fire, or people. He's only four dollars. By God, you can afford the. Okay, this is clearly that Prongles the Clown character again. Hehe, <laughs> clown funny. Your stomach is swollen with eggs, you troglodyte. You need to focus. Right, right. Sorry, sorry. Are there any other advertisements latched onto that bar pole? Yeah, that's exactly one. Phone's for next hotline. Somehow, I don't think you're going to get anywhere with this one. What a bounce? Do you have any better ideas? Consider again the bounce. Yeah, fine. Let us bounce. To the street away. 
What now? Uh, let's leave the main area. <clears throat> let's go here. Because we never went here before. Because I don't like talking to the R. Anyway, ah, uh, the Dial Town City Zoo. You know, man, this is intense. All the emotions I'm feeling right now. Oh, come on, it's just a zoo. You know, the Gorilla Pound, the Giraffe Brothel. What on earth would you... Aha, what do we have here? Last round, you've returned to us at last. Here to return yourself back over to the zoo, are you? My days of confinement are behind me, Theo. Go fuck thine self. You belong here, my chap. And the sooner you are relinquished for some society's spreadful grasp, the sooner I can study you again in detail. I hardly let calling visitors throw peanuts at me intense study. Well, we are a business and we do need to make money, are we not? I have dietary needs, Theo. Now, now, you hardly stopped. I granted you triple peanut rations, did I not? Peanuts aren't nearly enough. I'm a growing goblin, Theo. I need my jerky. Well, at any rate, I'm sure you have some questions. What can I, what can Theodore Rustlebelt, famed adventurer, explorer, documentarian, and zoo master do for you on this fine morn? Talk to me until the end of stream. So, how's the zoo doing? As of late? Splendidly terrible. Our visit accounts are at an all-time low, and with three exhibits escaping from our grass. I know of two. What's the other one? Which, uh, one of which is you, of course. We'll need a radical change to keep this place running. Or at the very least, unload more cheap souvenirs onto the fools who pass through our near deserted gift shop. What of the other two escapees? Where'd they go? That information eludes even I, my green friend. One was a white tiger, okay, which sadly went AWOL following a recent mob-operated botched caper that took place here after closing time. I could not act, nor was I, nor weighed my big stick at those scallywags, for I had already had my sleeping mask on. And I had my jungle blue music blaring at top volume, delivering me into a joyous nightly coma. So you let them leave without getting shot at? That's very unlike you, Theo. Rest assured, I did take a few masked pot shots with my beloved leather action rifle. Okay, see, that's more like you. As for the other escaped exhibit... I'm not legally able to speak about that one, as the mayor was to keep its very existence a mystery until its retrieval. It's... it's Bigfoot. Terribly sorry about that, my green friend. As a scientist explorer of the unknown, it pains me, perhaps more than it does you. But, should you have any other questions, those I can perhaps answer. What's the largest animal you've ever fist fought? My, my, what a splendid question. If we're only counting animals with fists, I suppose the answer would have to be none other than the noble kangaroo. Don't fight kangaroos, they're very strong. So envision as such. I was out exploring the Australian outback, and dusk was hastily descending over the plains as I was trekking through. Hence, I needed to find shelter and fast. Why does the outback get really... Why, does the outback get really cold at night or something? Not at all, no. I simply needed my beloved nine hours of beauty sleep to perform an exploration at top optimum levels of optimization. Continue on, then. So, let me hydrate. I thought to myself. Say, didn't those dandy kangaroo fuckers get their pouches converted into sleeping bags during the worldwide dial-up process? So I sourced a kangaroo from 12 miles away, using only the scent of its urine, the slightest of tracks. And live updates from the ultra-accurate 24-7 kangaroo GPS network. Needless to say, it wasn't long before a whole gaggle of rooms was located by yours truly. Uh-huh. So, 
I walked right up to the kangaroo, ready to snuggle down for bedtime. But alas, that happening's about. The pouch was already very much occupied by a tiny bastard kangaroo leg. So, I apprehended the juvenile runt and chucked it straight to the ground, which, needless to say, its mother was far from appreciative of. She threw me a left hook and took me square in the chin, cracking my plastic casing and almost displacing my glorious stash. So I threw one back, hitting her bullseye in her baby monitor head. Long story short, my punch prevailed and I slept with kangaroos, warm, moist, linen like sheep that night. Ha. Huh. That night, I gained the reluctant respect of all kangaroos, becoming kangaroo kid, and thus uh, gaining the near mythical K word pass. Now, I can legally say the K word, a horrific kangaroo origins lure that only can be uttered or read by those deemed cool by at least one noteworthy kangaroo. Please don't. Cool story, bro. Can I go now? I miss further tales of past explorations and adventures of yours, truly. Ah, phooey. Very well, if you simply must. Can you take me to the fun fair, please? This will be the last thing I ask him. Take you to the fun fair? My dear last round. Why would you wish to go to a place like that when there's infinite merriment to be found here, back in your old cell? Go ahead, climb back inside. I must insist. You might like nicer. You might like it nicer this time. Why? Even I. I even cleaned the hay pile. Yeah, because gorillas kept dying in the existing hay piles. Tut tut. I was hardly the individual who felt it necessary to discard of those used syringes in the hay pile in the first place. Now was I now? Uh. Please, Theo. Why must it be the fun fair in particular, anyway? Last I checked, you aren't particularly fond of crowds nor bright lights. I need somewhere to lay my eggs. By Jove, you're pregnant? An egg layer, no less. I insist, come back to science and live here with me. Your every wish granted. Why, I'll treat you like a monarch. A monarch butterfly stuck in a jar, I'm guessing? Ha uh, pass. Hard pass. Ah, hooey. Besides, if I wanted that, I'd commit tax fraud and go to actual prison. Same iron bars, lack of freedom. But at least they have nicer food. Presuming what they serve can legally be considered food. Well, I can't compete with human standards, even if they're very lowest that our government private company complex can get away with. Just know that bed and board are mere bars away should you ever change your mind. I won't, but thanks. Now, was that all? Uh, yes, it is. Ow, sorry, I just yanked on my headphones. Let me see if anyone's live to send you to, potentially. Okay, nope. Uh, so tomorrow, I'm actually gonna get started on replaying Portal Stories Mel, uh, because I haven't done it in a while, and I really am itching to start playing Portal again. Um, but until then, I will see you guys then. Thank you so much for sticking around with me for Dial Town. Uh, yep. Yeah. Bye, guys.